Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. I need new music. Discover new music now. JJO. Madison Solid Rock, 941 JJO. It's Brock, and it's time to discover new music. Joining me, Claudio Sanchez of Coheed and Cambria. Uh, you know him as obviously a super talented musician and probably, I'm going to say it, the best hair in the business there. I've said it. It's out <laughs> right. there. Uh, kind of your calling card at this point. Are, are you tired of discussing the, the routine you need to get the flowing locks like that? Is it just exhausting? at this point, Claudio? No, it's, you know, it's painless. <laughs> painless. Good, good. 2005, I was a frosted tipped intern, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Uh, and you guys just released Good Apollo. I'm Burning Star 4, Volume 1, From Fear Through the Eyes of Madness. Uh, you did this little meet and greet acoustic set at, a, I think, Capitol Records store, downtown Chicago. But long story short, it was effing packed, line out the door. I mean, you couldn't move. And as I was remembering that, I'm like, oh, my God, that was 2005. To think that even, you know, like just this band being, you know, professional now 20 years is like, Far beyond anything we could have expected. <laughs> that's for sure. Well, you're obviously doing something right. And now here we are all these years later. We have the latest album coming out at June 24th is the release date, correct? Right. Yeah, it ha- it got moved because of uh, some situations with vinyl and, and the relic that we're manufacturing for the deluxe edition. So, yeah, we had to move it. Vaxxus 2 a window of the waking mind other than I believe 2015's album. All of these have been part of a series, which you are obviously uh, the creator of uh, uh, the Amory wars with it being a concept and almost this, this story that has progressed. Uh, and again, with you and your wife working on this, the creators of it and everything, do you have the light at the end of the, Do you know where this story is going to end or is it changed with you and where you're at in life? Right. It's well, it's a little bit of both. Um, as far as like where a part is supposed to end in the overall like arc, mm-hmm. uh, I understand where that's where it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But like you're saying, life really sort of curates what the actual content of the story is. So so I put a lot of myself in it, you know, all depending on the things that I'm experiencing. I mean, you know, it has a, a lot to do with with the with this with the world building. Mm-hmm. Um, so so, yeah, you know, like uh, when I think about when I think about if I could put it in a, in a kind of way, like when I think about the original sort of arc, the good Apollo with the one that mm-hmm. good Apollo took place in a lot of that I wrote, you know, I wrote that music through my adolescence, you know, becoming sort of uh, a person, you know, and, and I can see a lot of that in those stories. Whereas now with these Vaxis, this Vaxis pentology, I sort of now see myself as the father and, being a dad, mm-hmm. I put a lot of of those emotions into into the music. So the characters are maturing along with you as as the story unfolds, and and you see that that progression through it. You're growing with the music, and even these characters that you guys have made up. Is that fair to say? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, though you know, in the Vaxis arc, we do introduce our introduce the readers and listeners to into a set of new characters, mm-hmm. and as far as like where that kind of world t- where that takes place in the timeline of the pre-existing Amory Wars is still undetermined. Uh, so we're like kind of, you know, we're just really introducing a whole new cast of characters. And then as the stories progress, we're going to start to introduce some connecting through lines to that original arc. So is it harder to write the story out or the music for the story, or is maybe I'm sure they both have their own challenges, but what, what's almost bigger hurdles. Right. Uh, well, I think, I think the writing of the story, like being, you know, translating the music into story, that's where my wife kind of comes into play. Mm-hmm. She really kind of helps me. Uh, Cause for the longest time, it's been, it's been a challenge, you know, to try to get music. I've, I've been writing for a very long time and not that that's easy either, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I just feel more comfortable like 
constructing song and trying to put story into song. Whereas then like going and penning it all together and like detailing it. I I just, I could use the help and my wife has become (laughs) that for me. So luckily you got her back there doing the, pulling the strings, making that happen. (laughs) Concept, concept albums, obviously if it, uh, nothing wrong with your typical songs about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, we all have those. those right. are great. We got those, but the concept album, and you look back at maybe like the Pink Floyd days and you have, you have Tommy, you know, and, and these characters, these stories, was there ever a, an album or maybe artists that really stood out with you that kind of took you on this concept journey? Uh, I think there's a few of them. Well, one, Funny you say, Tommy, uh, you know, I wasn't a fan of The Who growing up, but I did go with my high school to see Tommy on Broadway. Oh, very and, cool. Yeah. And so I, I think that may have had a little uh, hand in playing around with my subconscious. I did see uh, Pink Floyd in 94 on the Division Bell tour. And then, you know, seeing that made me go down the rabbit hole of revisiting <laughs> the wall and playing, you know, Dark Side of the Moon against, you know, The Wizard of Oz. Yep. Uh, yep. But I think one of the one of them that that doesn't really get put into that category often is the Beatles. You know, I think of like the White Album. I think of, um, you know, Abbey Road, the second side of Abbey Road. There's some interesting storytelling there, even with the uh, the conspiracies of of Paul being dead and the way they they sort of played against that in some yeah. of the songs. Like, so, yeah, those would be probably the big three for me. Madison Solid Rock, 94.1 JJO. I'm Brock and my guest for JJO Discover New Music is Claudio Sanchez of Coheed and Cambria. Do you want me to lie? My name is Claudio Sanchez and I play in the band Coheed and Cambria. Who's more tenacious, Claudio? Is it the comic book people or the music people? I I think because because they they are there's a very symbiotic relationship between both the comics and the music. It's it's tough to say. I mean, if we were to say just uh Outside of Coheed and Cambria, maybe yeah. comic fans, uh, but yeah. Uh, d- 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 do you ever have people give you notes on where uh, they think it should go or what you should do with uh, the characters and everything? Oh, absolutely. That <laughs> happens. That happens. And I think that's amazing. I, yeah. I'm actually, I really welcome that because I am a fan, yeah. you know, that's why I do what I do. And, and uh, Star Wars comes out with a movie. I have my own ideas of what that is, uh, you know, or whatever, ha- you know. Um, so I get I, I'm in I'm into that. I love it. It's yeah. uh, I feel very, very lucky to have have that. I, I guess, you know, it's nice to know that people care enough or invested enough in the uh, in the characters are like, well, no, this is what I think you should do. Why don't we tweet? Yeah, this? So, right. and so let's send them down this way. Yeah, for sure. For right, sure. That, right. That fandom is in there. And obviously you guys have. <laughs> Have, have made so many great albums and taken people on this journey album, obviously, which will be out June 24th. Again, Vax us to, do you have a, a favorite song on the album? Maybe one that really either brings the story to a point or just something that really speaks to you or, or something that you really latch onto on the new album. You know, it's so tough for me to answer that question, but um, because I do, I love them all. I think as a body of work, I'm really excited about the journey the music takes you through. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to pick one, maybe the end, maybe maybe uh, a window of the waking mind, the title track, just because everything kind of comes to a head there. And there's some uh, there's some interesting like things that, you know, are new to the Coheed fold. But but yeah, uh, if you have a couple minutes, we're going to do rapid fire and we're going to get really deep into your brain. Sound good? OK, these are the most important questions you'll ever answer in your entire life. Uh, All right. Being yeah. facetious because they're dumb, dumb questions. Uh, DC or Marvel? Uh. I'm sorry. I started off with a hard one. <laughs> um, oh, it's so tough. Uh, I, if I had to choose one, I'd probably uh, choose uh, DC. DC. Okay. Would you rather have Batman's belt or Iron Man's suit? Probably Iron Man's suit. I, I mean, think, I, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, w- I would ra- I would rather Batman's belt just because I'm a Batman fan over Iron Man. But, but you know, you, I'm going to get a lot, a lot more done in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> just have the suit set up, do its thing, man. I love it. Uh, uh, chili dog or corn dog? Or, or neither. <laughs> yeah, my, my, maybe neither. I mean, I like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, you know, I, I try to, yeah, I probably need, probably neither at this, at where I'm at right now. Now, yeah, you got to spend so much time at the gym after one chili dog. It's not worth it. It's not <laughs> worth it. Uh, would you rather see Bigfoot or El Chupacabra? Oh, what is El Chupacabra? Is that like the 
that's the uh, I believe the the it's like a, a Mexican uh, uh, monster like part dog and wolf and hairless, I believe. Well, if Bigfoot is anything like Harry from Harry and the Hendersons, I'll go with Bigfoot. Just so you know, Lizzie Hale from Hair, Hailstorm was the same thing. She's like, if he's nice Bigfoot like Harry and the Henderson, oh, right. we're good. We're good. <laughs> he's not like the Jack Links messing with Sasquatch type deal who's just a dick, you know? Uh, he's nice. He's good. He's good. Right. Would you rather take one punch from Mike Tyson or... A hundred punches from the where's the beef lady. Maybe a hundred punches from the where's the beef lady. I mean, that's a story right there, man. You got right. a hundred punches. Rest her soul, obviously. Rest in peace. Where's the beef lady? I don't know. I, if you've seen recently, there's been two people who have messed with Mike Tyson, like on an airplane. Right I know. I got beat up. And then the other guy, I, what are these people thinking? I just don't understand. Yeah, really. Leave the guy alone. <laughs> he could murder you with one punch. All right. right. I think that's it. That's all the hard hitting questions we had to cover. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, folks, Coheed and Cambria, new album out June 24th. Claudio, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the time. Oh, you got it. Thank you for having me. Always, brother. Always. Discover new music now on the homepage of WJJO.com in the JJO app or wherever you get your podcasts.